Buffer solutions. A common buffer solution, which is um, relatively easy to explain and easy to understand because it consists only of one deprotonation step, would be ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate solution, otherwise known as acetic acid, in old terminology, and sodium acetate. The buffer is prepared, uh, in this particular case, as 1.0 molar, or moles per litre, um, acetic acid, or ethanoic acid, and sodium acetate, or sodium ethanoate. The equilibrium that I showed you before, but mm, structural form, is shown here, where we have the ethanoic acid plus an equivalent of water, giving us the hydronium ion and CH3, CO2, NA. On one side we have the H+, on the other side we have the sodium acetate. If we rearrange this equation, so instead of using our model examples of H plus and A minus, we now have a real world structure to consider. The Ka, as we said before, for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. If we rearrange this equation to determine the concentration of H plus in our solution, we get the following equation on the board, which is shown right at the bottom, where Ka multiplied by the concentration of acetic acid divided by the concentration of the sodium acetate results in uh, a cal calculation for the concentration of H plus in the form of the hydronium ion. So, let's go back to our equation. Let's assume that the equilibrium concentrations do not differ much from the initial concentrations. So in this particular case, if we were to have a one molar equivalent of acetic acid and sodium acetate, this would give us a concentration of H plus of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. What that means in pH is if we do the negative log to the base 10 of this value, we get a value of 4.74. This is shown on the board there. Good. So far, so good. We have a solution. We know that the pH is 4.74. Now let us add a strong base to neutralize 2% of the acid. So we'll add a strong base, so we know it's going to be completely dissociated into, let's say, sodium hydroxide, Na+, and OH-. This amount of base changed the pure water, as we saw earlier on the scale, from pH 7.0 to 12.3. The OH- ions will react with the ethanoic acid, reducing its concentration. However, the acid molecules that react will become ethanoate ions. In buffers, the neutralization of one buffer component converts it to the other. So, let us apply that. We've neutralized 2%. This results now in a concentration of acetic acid of 0.98 molar and a concentration of sodium acetate of 1.02 molar. Now, let's use our knowledge of those concentrations to then determine what the pH is going to be now we've made that change. As you can see, we now have a situation where the very, very small change in concentration of our sodium acetate and our acetic acid results in a minute change, in fact it's barely observable, um, change in the concentration of H+, plus, uh, which is available. 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. This equates to a pH of 4.77. So whereas before, in the case of the water, where we saw a substantial change in pH with a minute amount of a strong acid or strong base, here, where we add a small amount or very strong base, we see a fundamentally unchanged uh, buffer solution. The pH has hardly been affected. And that is an example of a buffer scenario. However, let's repeat with the same concentration of acid. So note what we did beforehand, we're actually adding some more acid to the scenario, so we're converting more of the sodium ethanoate into the ethanoic acid. So we're moving the equilibrium back towards the reactants. This is represented in the equation here, 1.02 over 0.98. This results in a marginally increased concentration of H plus of 1.9 times 10 to the minus 5. Now, if we do the negative log to the base 10 of that concentration of H+, we see that we end up with a pH value of 4.72. Again, not very different to the original pH that we started off with when we used uh, one mole equivalent of either the sodium acetate and the acetic acid. 
the equilibrium in the buffer between acid and conjugate base has prevented the pH from changing much, and this is effectively the same. Right, okay, so let's bring this into play. How does it work, and what are the assumptions that we make when we do these reactions, or when we set these buffers up? We can adjust the equation to actually work out what the concentration of H+, plus, and therefore what the pH will be, by virtue of assuming a number of things. One of the principal assumptions, and this is why you need either a weak acid or a weak base, is that the amount of sodium acetate that you add pretty much stays as sodium acetate, and the amount of acetic acid you add pretty much stays as acetic acid. That's pretty much your assumption, your principal assumption. So you can control precisely how much H plus is in that solution. If we take the negative log to the base 10 of each of these particular terms, as you can see on the board, we can determine pH, which of course is the negative log to the base 10 of the H plus component, and by doing the log uh, to the base 10 of the others, we can see that pH equals pKa. So this is the log of the um, acidity constant or dissociation constant for the acid, plus the log of the concentration of sodium acetate over acetic acid. In its general form, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is given thus. So where we have a concentration of conjugate base, in this case our acetate, over our concentration of weak acid, in this case our acetic acid, we add the log of that relationship or ratio to our log of pKa to give us the pH, or log to the negative uh, base 10 of uh, hydrogen or H+. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.